next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212 Choices. 212 Choices. You know, cancer, it's not prejudice. It strikes everyone. We've seen the racists with the big C. We've seen humanitarians struck down with the big C. But there are remedies, even if you've already had different measures of treatment, like prior chemo, surgery, or radiation that didn't work. Now, I'm telling you, there's a guy out there who is clearly the best at this. First try out or second try out, that's Dr. Gil Lederman. My personal experience in 1991 is he came up with a remedy for my dad. Others had passed on it or just couldn't figure it out. He was able to save my dad's life, and my family will always, always be grateful to him. But look, if you have newly diagnosed and recurrent cancers anywhere in the body, Gil Lederman's the guy to go to. He's a brain and prostate cancer as well as body cancer expert, also treating breast, lung, pancreas, liver, kidney cancers, and more. So to hit the cancer, you call 212 Choices and set up an appointment with Dr. Gil Lederman. 212 Choices. Or do it for someone that you know won't do it for themselves. He'll send you an informative booklet DVD in advance, and then you cop a squat with him at his offices at 38th and Broadway. Dr. Gil Lederman takes most insurances, Medicare, and Medicaid. Just call Dr. Gil Lederman for your cancer treatment choices at 212 Choices, 212 Choices, 212 Choices. Welcome back to the Radio Surgery Hour. This is Rob Redstone here with Dr. Gil Lederman at the WABC Studios in the heart of New York City. We're just a few steps from the Radio Surgery New York Cancer Treatment Center on Broadway and 38th Street. Dr. Lederman, the leading cancer expert, treats prostate cancer non-invasively. He was the first in New York with fractionated brain radio surgery, and he's the first in America and in the Western Hemisphere with body radio surgery. Hey, Dr. Lederman, we're back. Hi, we're back and taking your calls. We're live. Dr. Lederman, we're talking about cancer treatment. So if you have questions about cancer treatment, you can give us a call. Our best is obviously to come in and we spend time with you and review your documents and give you copies and try to get to the bottom of it so you can hear all the options available to you in a clear, concise way. Uh, Some good news. In the good news department, I want to talk about a woman I saw from Columbia, South America. I've been treating her for about five years. She's had stage four cancer, and I know that a lot of people are told stage four, you have to have chemo. Well, she doesn't want chemo. She loves radio surgery. We find cancer if, if necessary, if it's there, and hit it. And if it's not there, she takes three months off or six months off or goes back to Columbia to be with her family. And we've been doing this for about five years, and she's doing great. She has stage four cancer for five years. She's declined chemo or surgery. She's doing very well, good quality of life. Uh, Where we treat, most every spot has gone away, stayed away, and we check her on a regular basis as well to prove that. And in the same good news department, there's a man with the opposite, with localized cancer. He had prostate cancer. We treated him last year when his PSA was 7.36, biopsy-proven prostate cancer. He is now in the zero range after just our treatment, treated with uh, focused beam radiation for prostate cancer, great quality of life, good sex life, urine in control, and his PSA down to zero. And a completely unrelated disease, mesothelioma. <clears throat> Many of you have not heard about it. It's a form of lung cancer, often related to asbestos exposure. And as you probably know, asbestos, which was thought to be the miracle agent decades ago, later on was shown to have increased risk of causing certain kinds of lung cancer. And there's all kinds of issues related to that. This man is a 66-year-old man from Bangladesh with four children. He was fine until January 2014 when he had shortness of breath in Bangladesh. They first checked his heart, which is okay. Then he came to New York and he was found to have mesothelioma. He had chemotherapy. He had four cycles of one chemotherapy. Didn't work. He had four cycles of another chemotherapy. Didn't work. And that's not unusual. Chemo does not work very well for this kind of cancer. He came to us this week. He's lost about seven pounds. He's on oxygen. We staged him up, and believe it or not, even though he has mesothelioma, the disease is pretty confined to the left chest. It's extensive in the left chest. He's having some pain in the shoulder, probably from the cancer pushing on the nerves. 
but not much more than that. We actually have had a good track record. In England, there was a newspaper that tried to find all the patients with mesothelioma successfully treated, and I think the only ones successfully treated in Great Britain were the ones who came to us. So we've talked to him about mesothelioma treatment and lung cancer treatment. We've talked to him about radio surgery and our results. We've treated many, many patients with lung cancers and other cancers. We've got him staged up. His son called me last night. He knows the story, and we'll meet again to go over all the details, but most likely he'll have those five treatments to try to control his cancer. Hopefully get in remission. Another interesting man who came in, speaking a few minutes ago, I talked about older people. Well, this man <clears throat> came in at age 90. He's a car dealer, and he's known about an elevated PSA for 20 years. All right, he's a car dealer. He's 90 years old. He probably has the resources, but he's just been reluctant to get anything other than homeopathic remedies. Now he's coming in with a complete blockage of his urinary system. The prostate cancer is growing, so it's blocked off the urine. Remember, the kidneys make the urine. The kidneys then send the urine down these little tubes called the ureter to the bladder. And then next to the bladder is the prostate and the urethra, the tube from the bladder that goes into the penis that carries the urine, is actually surrounded by the prostate and this man the prostate over 20 years of growth has blocked off the urethra blocked off the bladder caused the urine to back up and when the urine backs up to the kidneys it's very corrosive and damaging he came on kidney failure to us with a catheter in place he was worked up with a cat scan and a bone scan believe it or not with a psa now of 300 the cancer has not traveled. The workup scans are all negative. He declined to get a biopsy of the prostate. We got an MRI urgently that day. It was just a couple of days ago. And the MRI of the prostate shows the cancer in the prostate and seminal vesicles. So he certainly, by imaging, has prostate cancer and by a very high PSA. The catheter, by the way, relieved the pressure on the kidneys, and his kidney function, which was almost in the range of dialysis, is back to normal. Fortunately, it was found in time. So he's interested in treatment for high-risk, very high-risk prostate cancer. And again, if you look at our booklet, we're about 50, 60, 70 percent better than the other guys in a shorter period of time. So we treat people with advanced prostate cancer in the stereotactic frame with brachytherapy. Uh, it's a treatment that has a better success rate, and you can actually look at the data, and I've shown him the data, and I've shown his son the data. So hopefully after 20 years of contemplating prostate cancer treatment, he will give himself the chance. And this man who's 90, he actually looks like he's 70. So Age is one thing, and how people function are another. He has a business, he's active, he's vital, and I believe we shouldn't hold age against him. We should give him a chance to be successfully treated. And by the way, the New York Times in an article by Tara Pope this week, there was an article talking about prostate cancer screening again, and she quotes, and this is, I'm quoting her, a major European study has shown that blood test screening for prostate cancer saves lives that's how the article starts out and then she gets into the details of how many lives and you have cost analysis and the question i guess is do you want to save lives or do you want to figure out how many dollars you save per life saved and obviously statisticians can tell you well is your life worth saving or not well we tend to treat each patient who needs to be treated Uh, the question is can we take a person who has cancer and put them into remission can we take care of the pain can we take care of the suffering and you've heard lots of our patients just recently a man who a year ago had prostate cancer and symptoms and is now cancer free another man with prostate cancer and metastasis was in pain with a catheter now thanks to radiosurgery the pain is gone The prostate cancer has shrunken up. 
and he's actually in remission without the catheter with an excellent quality of life. And I told you, or I alluded to earlier on, it's not only women who have breast cancer. Yes, about 1% of breast cancers occur in men. And this week we had an uh, Italiano, a man from Bari in Italy, came to the United States. If you know Bari, Bari's on the uh, east coast of Italy by the Adriatic Sea. He hasn't been back to Bari in many, many years. He came here at the age of 16 and was blind a year later. He lost all his vision. He's now 79, so he's been blind for more than 60 years. He came with his daughter who had breast cancer. Now, he was blind because of detached retinas. Anyway, he's got a nodule in the breast. He found it himself. It's very small. He came in this week. We got it biopsied. We got it scanned, and he as he'll have his answer when he comes back to me this week for him he's obviously concerned because of his family history his daughter chose to have mastectomy we often we give people all the choices we believe it's up to the patient to choose it's not up to the doctor to tell you how to live your life it's up to the doctor to tell you all the choices all the options and when you hear all the options then you decide what's best for you uh, so this man has a nodule in, the, in his breast, in the right breast, at about the 6 o'clock position. We put a little needle in. It was painlessly done, safely done. And he'll be back in a couple of days to have the answer. And he'll have the paperwork in his hand. So everyone will know what's going on, and he'll know all the options. And here's an <clears throat> the ultimate referral. We had a woman who came in, 74 years old, referred by her daughter, who we've treated for metastatic cancer. So the daughter had had chemotherapy, just couldn't take it anymore, wasn't working, couldn't take it. And uh, she liked our treatment so much, she brought in her mother. Her mother had uh, lung cancer with a second nodule. She's been worked up at a big hospital in New York. She's been on Tarsiva from September until now. Well, she was told the cancer just was growing by a thumbnail, but in fact, it grew from 1.2 by 0.9 by 1.2 centimeters to 1.8 by 1.3 by 1.7 centimeters. It's about a 300% increase. So when you think about cancer, you have to think about the three dimensions. It's not just one dimension. It's three dimensions of a size of a nodule, and if you think about a round nodule, its volume is determined to the third power of the radius. So if something is a four centimeter nodule, that means the radius is two centimeters, which is two times two times two. And just yesterday, a doctor called me, and a friend of his had a nodule, and he said, oh, it's only growing from six to eight centimeters. This was a man with melanoma. Well, I said six to eight centimeters. It was six, and now it's eight in a short period of time. That's a 50% increase because it's the third power of the radius. It's three by three by three, three times three times three versus four times four times four. It's a 50% increase. So beware. Sometimes those small increases in measurements actually indicate a large increase in the volume of the cancer. This woman's been on Tarsiva. She's been on systemic treatment for two years for two small nodules. We could have treated both, I believe, two years ago and probably had them both in remission instead of two years of Tarsiva. So, wow, she is very interested to have focused beam radiation to hit those two nodules. Again, it's five treatments. Each treatment's about 15 minutes. People walk in, get a treatment, walk out. They go to work or go to lunch or go home or go shopping. They do what they want. Isn't the, That's what people should have is to do what they want, especially if the treatment is more successful. And by, by the way, the Tarsiva wasn't working. The cancer had increased by about 300%. And elsewhere, they just told her at this other cancer hospital, they just told her to keep taking Tarsiva. She's been on it two years. It hasn't worked. It's not going to work better in the future. It's done. It's kaput. She has a chance, but Tarsiva, forget about it. For this case, 
I'm not talking about every case. I'm talking about this case. We're going to hear from a couple new voices, and they'll be right back. This is Dr. Lederman for Radio Surgery New York, taking your questions, talking about cancer treatment. We're at 1384 Broadway, cancer treatment.